critters that were captured by NASA on that mission, the STS-75, in 1996. In all my considerable experience of the entire UFO scenario, I have never seen and never expected to see footage like that. And least of all did I expect to see it on film that, or, or tape that had been exposed by the government in a NASA mission. The shuttle Columbia in this mission was equipped with a very sophisticated and expensive ultraviolet camera. It was sensitive to the near ultraviolet. And when they were up at 300 miles above the atmosphere, they launched from the Columbia a small satellite with a tether. Not long after it was launched from the Columbia, the tether broke. We record steadily the whole uh, break and uh, coil back to the tether. Copy, Claude. Here we go. Give this a view of the satellite. Well, if it had to break, it did it in the right place. And you see on this astonishing film, you see the uh, satellite go drifting far astern of this orbiting Columbia. The tether, which is 12 miles long, straightens out into a long white line, which you can see as plainly as, as could be. Columbia and the satellite now 77 nautical miles apart. Now, while this is all going on, a whole covey of UFOs, perhaps three dozen of them, manifest to this ultraviolet camera, and they begin moving around, circulating, looking for all the world like something in an aquarium tank. The satellite, again, uh, just moving into sunrise. Now, Houston, of course, down on the ground, is getting this feed from from the Columbia, and they ask the astronauts in the shuttle, what can they see? What is it they, what is it they can see? Guys getting the image? Franklin, uh, we see a long line, a couple of star-like things, and a lot of things swimming in the foreground. Can you describe what you're seeing? Well, the long line is, uh, is a tether, um, and uh, there's a little bit of debris that uh, kind of flies with us. It is like a brilliant white bar. It looks like a neon sign, and it's 12 miles long. Now, what this does is give you a sort of cosmic ruler by which you can get an idea and an estimate of the diameter of the UFOs that are flitting around down there. Now, when you see them go behind the tether, that means that you can use that tether like a ruler to measure their diameter. And those things that are down there going behind the tether are between two and three nautical miles in diameter. One of the things you see over and over again is you see UFOs materialize into the ultraviolet while you watch. You see them come from out of nowhere to the point where they are returning a response to the camera. You also see them dematerialize while you, while you have them under observation. There's two of the central things that have gone on with UFOs since day one, materialization and dematerialization. It's going on in this film, 300 miles above the Earth, photographed by your government with your astronauts superintending the whole thing. Charlie, completely unzoomed, and uh, you see the full extent of the tether. Columbia Houston, that's a much better view, uh, a lot more... But I realized at this point that it's very secret, that the, it was kept secret because I asked him, what are you going to do with this piece of information? And he said, we always airbrush these out before we sell them to the public. So they're pesky little creatures uh, appearing on this uh, photograph they want to get rid of. This is a fact of the matter. We were really not sure after John flew whether or not there were critters, living critters, out there somewhere.
recovery as it passes over the Pacific Ocean. Once again, the Cirrus is part of the AFP 675. The problems that have occurred with the two tape recorders on AFP 675 have had a 